Welcome to the AlarmNet 360 Quick Start video on programming Lynx Touch 5200, 5210, and 7000 control panels. In this video, we will guide you step by step through the process from start to finish. Before you begin the panel programming process, make sure you have already viewed the Quick Start video on how to program a Lynx Touch communicator with Total Connect. The communicator must be programmed before you can program the control panel. To begin programming the control panel, go to the AlarmNet 360 landing page at www.alarmnet360.com. To log into the secure site, use your current AlarmNet Direct credentials, which are your username and password. If you do not have a login, please click on the Dealer Sign Up link and follow the instructions. Once the sign up form is successfully completed, you will have access to AlarmNet 360. Once you have successfully logged into AlarmNet 360, you will be on the Device Programming page. Enter the AlarmNet account number or MAC ID of the AlarmNet communicator that is associated with the Lynx Touch 5200, 5210, or 7000 control panel you will be programming. Then click Search. Next, click on the blue arrow to the right of the edit box. This opens the panel programming page in a new tab. Here, the account overview screen is displayed. This is an overview page that shows the customer's location information, the AlarmNet services selected, the type of control panel, and the communicator details. If you click the Settings menu option on the left, you can customize the Lynx Touch control panel's overall operational settings, such as system settings like the control panel clock, two-way voice, and more. Next, you can set the area settings, such as entry and exit delay times, and custom arming features such as quick arm. You can change your AlarmNet communicator settings, such as supervision levels and internal settings. Select reporting channels, such as the contact ID format and the alarms that get reported to the central stations, and reporter settings, such as report selections, low battery and trouble signals, and panel event logs. Some of the features in each section of this page are hidden upon first view. For all details, click on the blue Show More link on the bottom left side of each section. Click the Save button often to ensure you don't lose any of your selections. Once done, click OK. Next, click the Users menu option to add and modify users and user codes. If you click New User, a user profile box will appear. Enter the username followed by the four-digit user code. If Z-Wave locks are being installed, select whether or not this user has access to Z-Wave lock control. When finished, click Save and Add Another if you're adding additional users. If not, click Save, then OK. This brings you back to the main Users page. To enroll a new wireless device, click the Sensors menu item on the left. Then click the Add Sensor box on the right and a sensor screen will appear. Enter the serial number of the 5800 wireless sensor. Then select the zone number of the device, followed by the loop number from the dropdowns. The loop number is dependent upon the device being enrolled. If you are unsure, consult the installation instructions that came with the device. Next, click the device type, response type, and supervision level either supervised or unsupervised. Then create a custom description to identify the zone. Next, select the chime sound from the dropdown. Finally, deselect the alarm report box only if you do not want the zone to report to the central station. It is checked by default. Once the information is complete, Click Save and Add Another if you need to enroll an additional sensor. When you are finished, click Save, then OK. To add a key fob, click the Key Fobs menu item on the left, and the Add Key Fob screen will appear. 
First, select the number of buttons on the key fob from the drop-down menu. Next, enter the seven-digit serial number of the device. Then select the user associated with the key fob, followed by the features for each button. Once you are done, click Save and Add Another if you'd like to add additional key fobs to the system. When finished, click Save, then OK. Once the control panel is in service, you must click the Sync button to push or download the programming parameters to the Lynx Touch control panel. Select the Diagnostics menu item on the left to check the communicator details, signal strength, battery conditions, and the last 90 days of alarm transactions. The Event Log page displays the events and contact ID or CID codes and any SIA codes for system events that have taken place within the panel, such as recent openings and closings, alarms, and trouble conditions that may have occurred. Select the Get Activity button to access the Activity Log page to view all transactions that have taken place within AlarmNet 360 for the account over a 90-day period. Congratulations! You have successfully programmed your Lynx Touch 5200, 5210, or 7000 control panel on AlarmNet 360. For additional assistance getting started with AlarmNet 360, please view the other Quick Start Help videos located on the website.